somewhere deep in the abyss of the abyss of the abyss of time. A lot of Tiro stands by to protect the safety of all. And his name is Captain Safety. In this episode, two student servers are given a task which involves using chemical products in a kitchen at Oakcrest. They would soon discover a peculiar lesson in chemical safety. I'm Captain Safety. Using that chemical for this task could cause an accident. Yeah, right. Those warning stickers don't mean anything. What's the worst that can happen? What? You could get a chemical burn. You can cause someone else to get hurt. You can contaminate food. Or even worse. Even worse? That's right. Mixing the wrong two chemicals together could cause an explosion. Oh, no. So how do we know the right way to use chemicals? Follow me, and I'll show you how. Students, this is your chef de cuisine. He is responsible for all of the chemicals, all of the food, and all of the production inside this kitchen. If you ever have a question to ask about chemicals, he is the right person to go to. That's right, because chemicals can be confusing, so it's important to ask first. The first step in chemical safety is to make sure all chemicals are labeled correctly. If you happen to find a bottle that is unlabeled, do not use it and notify a supervisor immediately so that it can be discarded properly. That's right, Chef. This is very important, students. Even if you think you know what's inside an unlabeled bottle, never use it. Remember, no label, no use. Captain Safety, take two, no label, no use. Yeah, 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 Captain Safety, y'all. 2012. And here we go. No label, no use. So you won't be confused with the chemicals you use. No label, no use. Don't forget now. No label, no use. No use. So you won't be confused with the chemicals you use. No label, no label, no use. No use. No label, no use. So you won't be confused with the chemicals you use. No label, no use. use. Don't forget now. There ain't no excuses for having no labels on that bottle or two. Label that. Yo, what is that? Yo, let's get a label on that thing right there. No label, no use. So you won't be confused with the chemicals you use. No label, no use. No label, no use. Don't give me no excuses so now. You, you can't come up with a reason why these the bottles aren't labeled. Chemicals you use. Yeah. No that's label, what I'm talking about. No use. We've got some no lime label, away. No use. You got some medallion. So you won't be confused. What is that? Is that, with the is that sanitizer you strips? Use. No oh, yeah. We got no some use. blue stuff. No but, use. What is that blue so stuff? You but, won't be hey, confused. Let's get a label on that. The chemicals yeah. You yeah. Use. yeah. No yeah. label. Yeah. No yeah. use. Yeah. No label. No, no use. use. So you won't be confused with the chemicals you use. No label, no label, no use, no use, no label, no use, and I'm out. Okay, got it, no label, no use. But what do we do when we find the right chemical? First you have to make sure that you're wearing the right protection for the job at hand. And that's where I come in. Chemical protection comes in a variety of ways. Each kitchen is equipped with rubber gloves, aprons, 
goggles, and wet floor signs. If you're missing any of these items in your kitchen, notify your supervisor immediately. That's right, Captain Safety. When using any abrasive spray in a bottle, you should always wear eye protection, an apron, and gloves. In the event that a chemical gets in your eye, immediately notify a supervisor and go to an eye wash station. What's an eye wash station? An eye wash station can look like one of two examples. One looks like this. Simply pull up the plastic cover and the water turns on immediately. Another type that may be in your kitchen are eye wash bottles. These bottles are kept on the wall. Simply twist off the cap and rinse your eyes. Keep your eyes open and let the water run all over. Do not rub your eyes. While you are flushing out your eyes, a supervisor will notify medical personnel immediately. So chef, what's next? First we need to be careful where we place chemicals. Chemicals can be harmful if they come in contact with food. Be sure to store chemicals in their proper place and do so correctly the first time. Store them correctly? Yes, correctly. That's right. When putting chemicals away, make sure the lid is tight and the nozzle is turned off. Then, place the chemicals in their assigned area, such as the chemical rack, or in their assigned storage area. Your supervisor will be able to show you where these locations are in your specific area. So how will I know if I'm using the right chemical for the right job? Excellent question. During your training, we are going to review all of the chemicals that we use. But please remember, if you are ever unsure about a chemical, be sure to ask your supervisor first. We are here to help and guide you which chemicals are best for each job. Also, each bottle is labeled with the chemical, the intended purpose of the chemical, and safety instructions. Aside from being potentially dangerous, remember that chemicals are also very expensive. Oftentimes, less is more when it comes to our chemicals. Read the bottle for the proper amount of chemical that should be used to cover an area. We always aim to be good stewards of the residents' funds whenever a resource is available. Stewards of the residents' funds? Yes, everything we have here has been provided for us by the residents. The residents are the ones who ultimately pay for the chemicals, so we want to use them both efficiently and effectively. Today, these two student servers learned a valuable lesson in using the right chemical for the right task, all thanks to you, Captain Safety. Yeah, 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 Captain Safety, y'all, 2012. And here we go, no label, no use, so you won't be confused with the chemicals you use. No label, label, use, no use, no label, no use, and I'm out.